Hi everyone, so today we're going to be discussing a couple of really interesting things, right? Wilson's theorem and binomial theorem. Now, the, both of these things really, Wilson's theorem and binomial theorem, they're actually problem solving techniques for uh, factorial diaphantines, exponential diaphantines. But the thing is that because of the fact that uh, reducing modern is uh, significantly more common, we actually tend to prefer to use that. But these are also actually a couple of things that you might need to know in order to solve certain questions. So let's just see how that goes. Right, so this is the problem number one from the round two of the Singapore Maths Olympiad in 2008. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Wilson's theorem, binomial theorem, and binomial expansions. Basically, more or less what you're going to need from this problem is just the expansion of 1 plus x is power n. That's all, all, all we need for this problem. And that's actually pretty simple, it's pretty trivial. And you might have also seen that before. So after that, we're going to be solving a factorial diapentine, maybe like reducing mod n, you know, trying to work on some of those areas, working on a congruence model and all. And after that, we have some book sessions, national math Olympiads, and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so let's see. So the goal is to find all pairs of positive integers n, k so that it satisfies this given equation, right? n plus 1 raised power k minus 1 is n factorial. Now here's the thing, right? You might as well just try bashing this, right? And I would say go for it. Right? You might as well just try bashing it and you will probably get to a good solution as well. But for the purpose of this video, for the illustration purposes, we're going to be discussing a solution using Wilson's theorem and binomial theorem. And it's quite interesting actually how Wilson's theorem is actually applied over here. But yeah, let, let's just first start with the problem and see where we can use Wilson's theorem. So, okay, so whenever I see like this kind of diaphantine equation, especially like factorial and exponential diaphantine equations, what do I see is that we have an exponential term over here and we have a factorial term over here. And like I said many, many times before, these two things do not go well with one another, right? These two things, equating these two things is a big challenge, you know, and only certain numbers can satisfy that equality. So the idea is that there may be just a few solutions. There are probably just a small number of solutions, maybe two solutions, three solutions, and that's it, right? Maybe that's kind of the intuition. So what do you do? You first explore it, you know, let's just do some exploration, maybe. Exploration, maybe let's just plug in certain values and see what we get. So at, let's say at n is equal to 1, what will I get? I get 2 raised to the power k minus 1 is 1 factorial, which is 1. So 2 raised to the power k is equal to 2, k is equal to 1. So therefore, 1 comma 1 is a solution. That's it, done, right? Then we go on to n is equal to 2. You'll get 3 raised to the power k minus 1 is 2 factorial, which is 2. So 3 raised to the power k is equal to 3, k is equal to 1. Great, 2 comma 1 is also a solution, perfect. Let's move on to n is equal to 3. I'll get 4 raised to the power k minus 1 is 3 factorial, which is 6. So 4 is for k is equal to 7. Obviously, no solutions for integers. I move on to n is equal to 4. I'll get 5 is for k minus 1 is 4 factorial is 24. 5 is for k is equal to 25. k is equal to 2. So I'll get 4 comma 2, which is another solution. Now, here's my claim. You can go on. You can maybe check 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I usually check. The way I would do this is I would check up till maybe n is equal to 9. And if I'm getting no solution for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'll maybe just check 10 also, maybe, right? Maybe just check 10 also, but if I'm getting no solution like this, I'll just maybe write a claim that these are the only solutions. That basically 1, 1, 2, 1, and 4, 2 are the only solutions to this problem. Because like I said before, exponential, diaphantine, exponential and uh, factorial, they don't go well with one another and there are only going to be a small number of solutions. So this is my claim. What do I need to do and to prove that? And how do I prove that? Well, it's pretty simple. We need to prove no solutions exist for n greater than or equal to 5. Because we have n is equal to 4 over here and that's the point up till we get checked. So we essentially need to prove that there are no solutions beyond that for the given equation. Right? Great. So let's here maybe let's introduce this Wilson's theorem. Right? So what is this Wilson's theorem? Wilson's theorem basically says that for a prime p, we have this given relation, okay? P minus one factorial is congruent to minus one mod P. And so this is also prime numbers and this is actually a neat relation because it relates factorials with 
modular certain prime modulo certain prime okay so let's maybe like look at the equation so what do we have we have n plus 1 this per k minus 1 is equal to n factorial and maybe if i try to reduce mod n plus 1 Right, maybe if I like reduce, let's say mod n plus one, what will I get? Oh, this will obviously be zero. So I'll get negative one is congruent to n factorial mod n plus one. So basically, 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 n factorial is congruent to negative one mod n plus one. And this is actually quite similar to the Wilson's theorem over here, if you actually see. So this essentially states that a factorial is congruent to negative one mod prime. A factorial is congruent to negative one mod of prime so therefore n plus one has to be prime and because we are considering the case where n greater than or equal to five n plus one is obviously an odd prime the only even prime is two so n plus one is obviously an odd prime n plus one is odd so therefore n is even and composite because any even number other than two is composite that's pretty trivial Right, so n and uh, n is even in composite and maybe like n plus 2 is also even composite right they're just statements it doesn't matter too much okay how do we proceed how do we proceed so basically basically i'll i'll just make like a note over here like an observation rather the observation is the factorization of x is per k minus 1 the x is per k minus 1 can be factorized as x minus 1 times x is per k minus 1 plus x is per k minus 2 and add them all the way up to x plus 1 this is the factorization of x is per k minus 1. So if I plug in maybe x equal to n plus 1, what will I get? I'll get n plus 1 this for k minus 1, which is the left-hand side of our equation. The right-hand side was obviously equal to n factorial. So we get the left-hand side of the equation. Maybe just plug this over here. I'll get n times n plus 1 this for k minus 1 plus n plus 1 this for k minus 2 all the way up till n plus 1 plus 1. And let me just close the bracket. Okay. So n times all of these quantities, n plus 1 is for k minus 1, plus n plus 1 is for k minus 2, all the way up to n plus 1 plus 1 is actually equal to n factorial, because this is equal to n factorial, which is the question. And I just divide n by both sides, and I get something pretty simple. Right? Plus n plus 1 is for k minus 2, and this goes all the way up to n plus 1 plus 1 is equal to n minus 1 factorial. And here I'm going to try and reduce mod n. So when I reduce mod n, let me just like uh, separate the left hand side and right hand side over here. So if I just consider the left hand side, what will that be? It'll be just 1 plus 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 all the way up a bunch of times is a bunch of times. Uh, so that will be mod n on the left hand side. Uh, right. And how many n's to how many like ones we have over here? So if you actually see 1 is nothing but n plus 1 to the power 0. This is n plus 1 raised per 1. We're going all the way up to n plus 1 raised per k minus 1. So how many is this? This is k minus 1 term. This is 1 term. So we have in total k minus 1 plus 1 is equal to k terms. So LHS is actually equal to k mod n. And what will the right hand side be? Right hand side is n minus 1 factorial mod n, which is actually equal to 0 mod n. And you know why? Because what is n minus 1 factorial? What will n minus 1 factorial be if I just try to like represent this um, a as a product of integers? So 1 times 2 times 3, somewhere in the middle you'll get n by 2, right? And after that you'll get somewhere n minus 1. Correct? 1 times 2 times 3, you'll get up to n, somewhere you'll have n by 2 and then you'll go on and on up till n minus 1. That is n minus 1 factorial. So this 2 and this 2 actually gets cancelled. So what is left? n is left. So n minus 1 factorial is actually congruent to 0 mod n because this is actually divisible by n, what we are seeing over here. So effectively, effectively the left hand side was k mod n, right hand side is 0 mod n. So effectively, k is congruent to 0 mod n, which is what I received when I reduced mod n. So therefore, essentially, n divides k. So that implies basically k is equal to mn for some m, which is a natural number. Right, that's pretty clear. So what was that equation again? n plus 1 raised per k minus 1 is equal to n factorial. So if you can just write n plus 1 raised per k as maybe n plus 1 raised per mn, or if you can write this as n plus 1 raised to the power n whole raised to the power m, I can write that as well, right? So basically what I'm proposing over here is n plus 1 raised to the power m raised to the power m minus 1 
will obviously be greater than or equal to n plus 1 this for m minus 1 right and now we go on to the thing of the binomial expansion that i was telling you about the expansion of n plus 1 uh, raised to the power m so it's actually very similar to the expansion of 1 plus x is for n and that's actually a pretty simple expansion so n plus 1 this for m is actually nothing but n this for n plus n choose 1 n this for n minus 1 plus um n choose 2 and this for n minus 2 and this actually goes on and on and on up till 1 and then you have this minus 1 over also right okay perfect so basically n plus 1 raised to the power n raised to the power m minus 1 is actually greater than or equal to this quantity but this quantity if you actually see this quantity is actually greater than n raised to the power n so you have the strict inequality and is greater than n raised to the power n and actually it's good to know that n raised to the power n is greater than n factorial this actually holds for n greater than or equal to 2 it's really easy to see that because 2, 2 raised to the power 2 is greater than 2 factorial and 4 is greater than 2 and it holds for all uh, n greater than or equal to 2 so it obviously holds for n greater than or equal to 5 which is the case that we're considering so effectively n plus 1 raised to the power m raised to the power m minus 1 is greater than n factorial what was this n raised to the power k right n plus 1 raised to the power k minus 1 is greater than n factorial what was our question our question was n plus 1 raised to the power k minus 1 is equal to n factorial but we see that this holds for n greater than or equal to 5 we want this but we get this so therefore no solutions for n greater than or equal to 5 right so the only solutions are what we had found before 1 comma 1 2 comma 1 and 4 comma 2 so that was a pretty interesting problem actually. Like I said before, you do not need to use this Wilson theorem and binomial theorem. It's good if you do, right? You have uh, aced another problem solving technique, but um, you can also solve this by just reducing mod n and just bashing it, right? Pure bashing. But yeah, this is a pretty, pretty standard application actually. Uh, the idea is again, whenever you have a factorial Lyapuntine with an exponent, there are probably going to be just a few solutions. Beyond the point, you will stop getting solutions and that is what you need to prove. You need to kill the bulls over there. And that's what we did, right? We formed certain inequalities and just proved that, uh, you know, the left hand side is greater than the right hand side. Pretty standard, something that we've discussed before as well. So yeah, I hope you learned something from that and let's move on. Great, so you have some book suggestions on national math law pairs. You have elementary number theory by David Burton, principles and techniques in combinatorics, problem solving strategies by Arthur and Jill, functional equations by Venkatachala, problems in plane geometry by Sharigan, and of course, elementary number theory by S.E. Pinsky. Okay, so at the end of a similar but challenging problem and I wanted to prove that there exists no positive integers m and n so that m greater than 5 and that m and n satisfy this particular equation. Now it so happened that this question was also from the Singapore Math Olympiad. It's like in, in their I believe this was 2000. So 8 years later they asked like a pretty similar problem. So problems do repeat sometimes in Math Olympiads. So yeah, if you're able to solve this, or if you're able to make any progress on that, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.